Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to live longer and feel better, then do we have the C60 show for you. Today, I'll be talking with Chris Perez, co-founder of SES Research and one of the leading experts on C60, particularly in olive oil. And that's just what I want to talk with him about today, about one of the coolest new compounds on the block and how its antioxidant benefits are making it one of the most sought after products in the world. That plus we'll talk about the mind-body rat connection. Go Cougs, a 66 month old rat at C60, a double your life guarantee. What on earth are the flat earthers and what in the world buckyballs have to do with anything? So welcome to the show, Chris. Are you ready to shine? Woohoo! I am ready to shine. And thank you for that introduction. And I got to say, I love the buckyball there behind you. It looks, looks amazing. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was working to find just the right image to go with our movie magic here and make it colorful so that the buckyball can shine too. So actually, let's dive in yes. right from there. Before we dive right into things, what exactly is the magic molecule? The magic molecule is the buckyball. It's the, it's the molecule that's behind you there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you imagine a soccer ball, the lines on a soccer ball represent the bonds between the carbon atoms. Yeah. So you really, it's called carbon 60 or affectionately called the buckyball. Uh, and it's 60 carbon atoms in the shape of a sphere. So it was discovered here in Houston, Texas at Rice University by a Dr. Richard Smalley. He discovered it in 1985 and by 1996 had won the Nobel Prize for that discovery, which is one of the shortest times ever for earning a Nobel Prize. Because typically it's like 30, 40, 50 years down the road. They're like, hey, that that thing you discovered was kind of important. They knew the buckyball was going to be really important. So 11 years, he already had his Nobel Prize. So, so let's back up. We're going to dive into the Nobel Prize. But it reminds me of being a kid and going to Epcot Center. Why is that? Well, because there's a guy by the name of Buckminster Fuller who created the geodesic dome, and that's why they're called affectionately buckyballs, and the whole gamut of materials or molecules are called fullerenes. Uh, he invented the geodesic dome, and that is the same as the Epcot dome that you're talking about. Very, very cool. And it was, it was what, 1986 when it was first discovered, but when was it first predicted? Um... Well, that's a good question. I don't remember off the top of my head. I know it was, it was years before. I also know this is interesting. So you've caught me. Let me add an extra piece. Um, one year prior to the actually Richard Smalley group uh, discovering it and publishing it, IBM, IBM had the exit. Well, I didn't get to get you there. You know everything. <laughs> I love it. I've been working on it. I've been doing my <laughs> homework, Chris. <laughs> but they didn't Very know good. what yeah, they so had, did they? Well, they just wrote it off as an anomaly. And, and think about this, and we can get, you know, stop me if I start getting really technical on this. But the, the way that they made the discovery is they were just basically um, vaporizing graphite and taking it into a mass spectrometer. And then they were counting the number of carbons in each of the particular molecules that were there. So typically in this, this uh, process, carbon ends up as a flat sheet, a graphite sheet. Mm -hmm. And they noticed, actually the grad student, it wasn't Dr. Smalley, the grad student noticed that there was a slight peak at 60. And so his question was, well, if it's a flat sheet, why would a sheet of 50 not, 60 be more popular than a sheet of 59 or a sheet of 61? Mm -hmm. And he was able to tweak the machine and make that peak at 60 even more pronounced. And so then brought that data. He actually did that over a weekend and brought that to the group on a Monday. And that's when they tried to start figuring out, well, why is 60 so important? And boom, they found that soccer ball shape, which is the shape of the geodesic dome. I love it. And so... Why was it that only 10 years later, Dr. Smalley won the award, won the Nobel Prize, rather than so many years later, like after he's passed on, somebody actually finds a use for this thing? So um, I, I'm going to start with kind of a, a general question. A lot of people know this. Some people don't. How ubiquitous is the benzene ring? So I'm, you've heard of the benzene ring, right? Oh, yeah. Plastics everywhere everywhere like you can't like we couldn't function in modern society without the benzene ring it's in most medicines and definitely in plastic so like just stop for a moment and think okay medicines and plastics okay we need this stuff right um 
they rec- hearkened that the buckyball was a 3D version of benzene. So if benzene's ubiquitous in your life, they thought, well, this 3D version is going to be as important as ubiquitous at some point. And that's why he won the Nobel Prize so quickly in that short 11-year period. Well, thank you. What I find fascinating is some of the, ca- the characteristics of this. I'm also, uh, uh, I'm wanting to call it, I guess everything is quantum, but I really want to call this a quantum particle because of how it behaves. So you can tell us some of its unique properties. So uh, one of the things that I, I will often say about the buckyball is that it performs as well or better than the current best material in any application they put it at. So uh, really early on, they would you know put it in car. You know, so I don't know if you the, your tires are black because of carbon black. So buckyballs make a better carbon black. Uh, they're you know ink that is black. Buckyballs make a better black ink. Um, they're good in solar cells. Really, like I said, in almost every application that you put a buckyball in, uh, it performs as well or better than the current best material. The only reason it's not so ubiquitous is it's just expensive to make. The current best process is a laborious, time-consuming process, and so so the material is very expensive. Thank you. So let's talk about some of its really funky properties. Wave particle behaving like light protons. It's um, It's harder than a diamond. It actually can turn into a diamond if you compress it anisotropically. So that's nice and nice and evenly. Um, It can hold more electrons than any other molecule and release them uh, without damaging its shape. So that buckyball has like a six fold symmetry. So you could find in that image behind you, there's six different uh, uh, symmetry uh, planes and that gives it a very unique strength. And that strength and its and its affinity for electrons allows it to hold electrons and release those electrons without deteriorating. Now, this has pretty interesting implications. You know, we're all used to our cell phone, and on day one, the battery is amazing, and uh, on year one, it's a little less amazing, and then it starts petering out. The reason those batteries start uh, reducing in how they work and their quality of re- holding a uh, um, a charge is because the actual molecular structures that are holding those charges are deteriorating. And with the buckyball, that won't happen. So we'll probably see buckyball batteries um, sometime in the future. So when you talk about powerful enhancing, and, and we don't have to get into the, the tech specs on this, but but you've got me going under the, the theory or the assumption is it takes anything and props it up, makes it stronger, helps it to hold together, gives it more structure. That's That seems to be what's going on. Like it, ju- it just is beneficial in, in all the applications that, that you put it in. I mean, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but, but pretty, pretty accurate. Is it, this is a question, my, I, I've got to give my wife, uh, the, Jessica, the producer of the show, the credit for this question is she's going, is it found naturally in nature? So you can, in fact, find buckyballs naturally in, in, in nature. Uh, in fact, if you take a, a, a candle flame, right, and it's got a little black soot, usually you need like a cold metal plate and you start collecting that black soot, you can find some traces of carbon-60 in it. So yes, it's definitely a naturally occurring material. It's just not naturally occurring in, in a, in a, in a, at a grand scale. So it does have to be manufactured. Another place that you can find it naturally is there's a, uh, the KT uh, boundary. Um, that's when the asteroid struck earth and you've got this whole boundary. There's a lot of carbon in that boundary layer around the planet. And there's a, 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 a pronounced, uh, uh, amount of C60 in that particular layer. Wow. Let's go from meteorites to the human body. Has anybody found it like under an electron microscope or anything, or a hint that it may exist in the body? Um, no. So, so that if you haven't put it into the body, then the answer to that is no. All right. Let's go from there. Let's talk real briefly because I want to double back later in the show. We're going to talk talk about uh, solvents and all that good stuff. But in general, how is it made? Um, so the current best technique for, well, there's really three techniques for manufacturing. And the current best is the carbon arc uh, process. So basically you take two graphite rods, uh, which is one of the hardest materials to vaporize, and then you vaporize it in an inert environment. So you have to have a chamber. You've got to get all oxygen out of the chamber. You have to have it, have it controlled. You want to backfill it with an inert gas. Uh, and then you're just vaporizing these graphite rods. 1,000, 2,000 Celsius. We're talking about the sun temperature here. How are you vaporizing it? So, uh, well, really, you, we vaporize it with, uh, really, it's a power supply. You could use a, a welder, right? So a typical arc welder uh, can be used to, to get those two rods to heat to the right temperature and then vaporize that graphite. Excellent. And then, okay, sorry to interrupt there. You vaporize yeah. this. What's, where do you go from there? 
Well, so just quick, it's it's interesting. Yes, it's the temperature of the sun. And interestingly enough, when you're, you know, we have sight glasses when we're doing this production. And if you uh, don't have a welder's goggle in place, first off, you'll never see again. So that's a, a important safety piece. And the other is <laughs> if it shines on you, um, you will actually get a sunburn. Right. So it is the localized temperature of the sun in just a really small. So in, in addition to this chamber, that's, you know, vacuum tight and, and uh, devoid of, uh, of oxygen and full of inert gases. Um, it also has a whole lot of water cooling to manage that temperature. So uh, sorry, I wanted like I, I, I know some people find that interesting. We've talked to some scientists are like, I just want to come see the arc. And so that's 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 the thrill of the arc. I, I find it interesting. And it brought me back to a high school physics class where when a, a very, very linear professor and um, a very good scientist himself, he let he wanted to show us something very bright like this. But he actually let I think it was magnesium on fire mm -hmm. and and the magnesium actually caught a paper towel on fire, which was on the lab cart, which then jumped off of the cart and rolled the whole way through the lab. And you're hearing the, the professor going, ah, you know, as we've got a magnesium paper towel fire going. But it was, <laughs> yeah, very, that's very stuck bright. in your mind. That's very, that's very cool. It's, 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 it's it was wonderful how the mind works, right? With little things and, and, uh, it, you know, those types of things, uh, I know a lot of what you do is kind of self-development, self-improvement. Yeah. It's sometimes those things, you know, if you told me that you became a magnesium scientist because of that, like that kind of thing wouldn't surprise me. Those are really awesome, impactful moments in our lives. I, I would agree with that. So. All right, so we've got this brilliant bright light. We've got to cover ourselves up or we're going to get a sunburn. So bright, we got yep. to wear shades. This material is shining bright. Where do we go from there? Um, okay, so so basically what comes out of that is a soot. And again, this is one of the three ways to manufacture. So you end up with this uh, uh, fullerene-rich soot. So about 10% uh, of that soot that comes off of it is fullerenes. The rest is amorphous carbon. We kind of call it carbon junk. And so the next step is you've, you've got to separate those fullerenes from that carbon junk. And the way to do that, kind of the best way to, for your audience to picture it is, uh, imagine you've got a, um, a beaker and it's got sand and sugar in it and you add water. So now obviously the sugar is going to dissolve in the water. If you filter that, then what goes through the filter is the sugar water, right? So the water with the sugar in it, and then what gets stuck on top is the sand. Well, the same thing with fullerenes. Fullerenes will actually dissolve in solvents. So they'll dissolve in hexane or toluenes. They're not, they're not fun solvents, but they're solvents that can do the job. It'll dissolve in those solvents. You filter it. What stays on top is the carbon junk and what goes through that filter. Um, depending on if you have pure C60, it's actually a beautiful purple color. Uh, if you had pure C70, it would be a beautiful red color. And really, it's just kind of when it's mixed together, it's a maroon color that comes through. Uh, so now you've separated your fullerenes from your carbon soot. The next step is actually to separate your C60 from your C70. There's a lot of ways to do that. You can do it with chemical um, chemicals to get it to settle out. Uh, you can actually do it with uh, carbon, uh, with, uh, excuse me, um, chromatography. Uh, high performance chromatography is one of them. And then just liquid chromatography is, is the standard technique. So now you've got your pure C60, your pure, pure C70. And you might be thinking, hey, didn't you just say it was in toluene or hexane? So I know this is eventually going to end up in my body. What do you do with that particular product, right? So one, you of course, you you boil off the, the the solvents that are used, and then you want to take that particular black powder uh, and make sure you do a very high hot oven baking of that product. Uh, and then we do an additional wash just to make sure that all the solvents are removed from uh, from the C60. So that's the process really of making C60. Awesome. And we're going to dive back more into that process, and we're going to talk about uh, benefits of olive oil and stuff in just a little bit. Before yeah. we do that, you're talking about playing with some, some volatile compounds, some dangerous stuff, but let's talk about some startling health benefit results. What did researchers in France find when they were looking at C60's toxicity in 2012? Right. So, so, um, first off, we, you know, we talked about benzene and we know that benzene is toxic. So if you had a glass of benzene, you really should have it covered and it should be in a, in a vial locked away and, and everybody knows that benzene is toxic. So they assumed that the C60 molecule buckyball would be toxic. So they did this toxicity study back in 2012 in, in Paris. And, uh, so they gave one set of rats water, they gave one set of rats olive oil, and then the other set of rats olive oil with C60 in it. 
When you do a toxicity study, you don't just give a little bit to the rats and see if they feel uncomfortable. Uh, you give a lot to the rats because you're trying to figure out, is this material toxic, right? Um, and the reason they're doing these studies is like, hey, if we're going to be putting C60 in solar cells or batteries, we need to understand, you know, how toxic of a material it is. So that's why they're doing this study. So they, so they give these rats lots of C60 in olive oil. And they don't die early, right? A typical Worcester rat lives about 32 months. Um, they actually killed the last rat at month 62. So they were down to two rats. They've, you know, 90% longer than the study was supposed to be going on, right? And one of the two rats dies. And I'm like, all right, we're killing the last one. We need to kind of compile our results and publish the study. Yeah, I know it's it's rough. Um, and uh, and so they published the study, and now. It's the sing not only not only did they live twice as long, a typical Worcester rat, so those rats that were given water died about 32 months, they all had tumors. And even though they lived twice as long, the rats given C60 in olive oil, none of them had tumors. So it's a, a you know, two really pivotal, very important when we're talking about longevity and overall health um, results from that particular study. And and what I understand about the researcher, and I'll, I'll per, forgive me for butchering his name, uh, yeah. Dr. Fathi Musa, um, yeah. is that he was not into studying longevity. This blew him away. They're double life expectancies, and this is the opposite field of he's in. He's in carcinogens. How fast is this going to kill something? Yes. Yeah, and, and imagine, so just kudos to him, because imagine you're doing this toxicity study. You're yeah. focused on, on you know, what is the carcinogenic effect going to be, right? This was, yeah. It was presumed that it was going to be. By the way, the literature didn't bear that out. So even up to the 2012 study, the literature where they were injecting C60 powder into rats to see what happened, the rats just passed it through their system. They had rats inhaling it because it's a nanoparticle, and they kind of assumed it might have some asbestos-like features to it. The, it just passed out of their system. And so all of the kind of previous research didn't, didn't bear out that it was going to be, you know, toxic or carcinogenic. So he's doing this study and he hits 32 months. He could have just called it quits then and said, okay, we now know that it's not toxic, but he like invests the time and money in his, in his research students and continues that study for another 30 months. Right. So we're talking more than two more years of this study. Kudos to him for, for making that decision. That's pretty exciting. Absolutely. So let's go from there. Let's talk about one of the words of the day. What are free radicals and what's going on with free radicals in the body or in the rat's bodies? So the, so the current thinking about uh, aging is that it's caused by one of two things or both combined. And one of them is free radicals, so oxidation, and then the other one is um, inflammation. And so free radicals are, are kind of a natural byproduct of your body processing foods and going through the chemical processes that it does on a, on a regular basis. But they're also oxygen. You can kind of think of it like rust. Without oxygen in the air, you cannot rust iron. Um, and so it's kind of like rust in your body. And so it makes sense that it's aging you. The buckyball is one is a very powerful antioxidant. So like, like we spoke earlier that it has the ability to hold electrons and then release electrons without, um, you know, breaking down its molecular structure. Same thing is true for this oxidative, antioxidative uh, effect. It can actually grab these um, oxidants or uh, free radicals in your body, absorb them, get them out of your system, and and uh, and and it's the, the molecule still retains its shape. And so, um, one of the studies that was done, it kind of indicated that C60 was about 172 times more powerful than vitamin C. I know that's a big number. Um, I, I, I wouldn't, I don't like to hang my hat on that particular number, uh, mostly because there, there are other, um, antioxidants that have a higher, and this is on the auric scale, mm -hmm. higher auric scale, um, uh, antioxidative effect as vitamin C. But at the end of the day, it's like, how does your body interact with it? Right? So if you put it in a peach dish and it absorbs all the free radicals, but it doesn't do the same thing in your body, you know, it, it, it's really, you got to go one step farther, but it is a very interesting fact about uh, the buckyball. So we throw the buckyball in there. It acts as a mop. It helps get out the free radicals that are in the body, which we've been trying to do with vitamin C, with this supplement, with that supplement, with yes. our resveratrol, and, and it's got the mop of all mops. It seems to be the mop of all mops. It, that, that is certainly what it seems. Um, it's kind of interesting because when that first 2012 study came out, people started calling us for asking us, how much in a dose? 
And we were still, you know, we have our carbon nanomaterial manufacturing hats on and, and it was really hard. Like, like, I, like I described, you got that study and you got the previous studies that kind of showed C60 to be safe. But, you know, in our minds, we're like, no, you, this isn't a dose. You put it in tires and batteries and solar cells. You don't put it in your body. So we actually added not for human consumption to our labeling in 2013, just to, uh, just because that was our mindset. That was we felt like the right thing to do at that point. So let's shift gear from there, and we're going to talk. Yeah. We're going to talk later about the, the for human consumption version. But let's talk about the different ways C60 can help. And what I'm curious about is what's the most exciting way you see C60 helping. So um, we get we get testimonials all the time, um, and and so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of those testimonials. So I'm required to to let you know the FDA has not evaluated our product, um, and it's not inten intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. So that's an important thing, so that you guys can you know take everything with a grain of salt. I do. I can tell you, I take everything with a grain of salt. So um, really in 2018, uh, we kind of reevaluated uh, where we were with C60 and olive oil. Uh, and, and we really had two questions if we were going to kind of pursue this as, as a product that we were going to sell. One of them was a moral issue. Uh, I take C60. My wife takes C60. Everybody on our team takes C60. I'm comfortable selling the product. So that's kind of the first and, and really most important check. Uh, and then the next is legal. Uh, FDA, FTC are the governing bodies and we're on the right side of that. So as soon as we kind of got through that piece, I, we started getting testimonials, you know, we're selling more of the product and the testimonials are just, just fantastic. And I'll get to them in a second, but my, every time I would get on the phone with one of our customers and they would share some testimonial, there's a part of me that's like, I don't know what to do with this testimonial because I'm a scientist and I want, you know, more research study, but these people are saying some pretty amazing things about what's going on. Well, you, and so, you spoke with me before the show about you're in a really awkward place and we'll get more maybe into your company in a little bit, but you're going, I'm a scientist and all of a sudden I'm in nutraceuticals or something. And that's really not where you wanted to be in life. No, I, I didn't wake up and say, hey, I want to I want to figure out a product that's going to help people. Certainly, I wasn't opposed to that. Right. And I didn't wake up and say, I want to make some sort of nutraceutical that I can put on the market and make money like neither one of those was on my radar. And then this kind of nutraceutical that seems to be helping people landed on my lap. And I, I'll be honest, I still struggle today with, you know, these testimonials that are coming in. And, and I'm always um, I'm always excited when somebody gives me a good testimonial. So enough about about that. So here are are some yes. of them. One of the ones that seems to be um, the most predominant, and it's really subtle. So sometimes, uh, and I'll tell a little story, but let me just say better sleep. So I was looking even through your kind of list of, uh, uh, of shows, and it was about seven months ago that I think you talked about sleep. And then even maybe two years prior to that, I'm currently reading a book called Why We Sleep. Yeah. I couldn't recommend it more unless you really want to be scared about sleep and potentially the lack of sleep that you're getting oh, it from kills that us if you don't sleep. Yeah, it, do, it really does. And the stats are like how your brain function is reduced and how your cardiovascular increase, you know, when they, everyone hates daylight savings, but most people don't realize like cardiac arrests go up when, when you lose that hour of sleep, like it's really, really important. And I, they're kind of my current thought process. I don't know how it's helping people sleep. I do believe it's helping people sleep. But my current thought process is, well, if people just slept better, like we all have this, I feel like uh, hand waving understanding that better sleep is good for your you know, physical, mental and emotional well-being. But, uh, you know, after reading this book, I kind of realize it's it shouldn't you shouldn't be waving your hands. You should, I don't know, be waving a finger or pointing at the stats. Uh, and, and it's really important. So if that's if that's the main thing that that the buckyball is doing, then that could explain a lot of the testimonials that we get. So, so better sleep is one, by the way, people take the product in the morning and then report that they're getting better sleep at night. So it's not like a, a typical sleep aid where, where, and by the way, that book will tell you, uh, why we sleep will tell you that the sleep aids are really knocking you out. Robbing they're not letting you of you. sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So they are giving you the, the false sense that you're sleeping when in fact that's not happening. Um, so you, you never really heard of a sleep aid that you take in the morning and then it helps you sleep at night. 
Um, so, and we've got reports of people who, you know, prior to taking C60 couldn't sleep. Uh, uh, they would fall asleep until 1 a.m., now going to sleep at 10. And then one of my favorite ones is I've got a business coach. He said for 50 years, he needed an alarm clock to wake up. And since he's been on C60, he wakes up before the alarm clock. And then, you know, those days we're all a little bit busy. And when he doesn't get enough sleep, he still feels refreshed. And I, and I can report the same thing. Um, now, I know you're an athlete. Right. And you're kind of a serious athlete. Um, I, I'd like to share some some testimonies that we have. I've got one of the guys in my office is a um, is a professional, former professional football player. Yep. Uh, he played in the American Football League and uh, and his wife is a personal trainer. Uh, and this was like ne next day uh, testimonial. So he took the product, uh, I don't know, I think on a Thursday and then on a Friday was running stairs with his wife and both he and his wife noticed the difference in him. Uh, and, and, and just kind of, this is really important. Uh, another guy, uh, I love soccer. I played soccer for 25 years. I'm a little envious that one of the guys on my team is a, a young Latino guy who plays soccer regularly and he plays indoor soccer. Indoor soccer is entirely a sprint sport, right? So there's no recoup time. It's kind of like ice hockey. You do line changes and things like that. And he said that he went from on the next day, went from being able to be on the pitch for 10 minutes to actually being on the pitch for 20 minutes. Yeah. And so um, it seems to have, and I do actually have a video testimonial on our site, that that it seems to have the ability to um, give you increased energy for the workout. And then you said your big concern, look, I, I don't have any problem pushing my body. Do I recover faster? Well, one, if you're sleeping better, you're recovering faster. And then, yes, we are getting reports that, that people are recovering faster. Awesome. Are there many studies going on with C60 today to be looking into this in the human body? So um, I, I'm, I'm aware of, and this is through you know, word of mouth, that there's a major cardiac institution in the middle of the country who actually started a study before 2012. Um, and they're supposed to be about I'll be honest, it's been about six months that I've been aware of this and I've been hoping for this to come out. They're supposed to be about to kind of publish their studies and the impact on 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 the cardiovascular system. Um, we're we're trying to put together like I, th that. I'm actually trying to contact the guy who wrote the book, Why We Sleep, because I'd love this is it's a pretty easy thing for a sleep scientist. It's not easy for me, but it's a pretty easy thing for a sleep scientist to say, like, hey, you took C60 and olive oil and, you know, here's your your rent. REM and NREM sleep ratios, and it's deeper and better and healthier, uh, it's easier for them to do that. So I'm trying to contact them and get these started. We are also working because nobody's recreated the original rat study. Mm -hmm. So we're working to recreate that rat study um, just so that we got supporting data. Um, and, and you probably know it's it's not inexpensive to do this. We just feel uh, that we need kind of further ver verification that those results back in 2012 are actually real. And then what can we do to take this science further and further into the future? Excellent. And, and thank you for redoing the study because often uh, huge anomalies come about between one study and another study and you got to duplicate the protocol exactly. And, and what does that yep. mean? For, in, for instance, how did you end up, was it because they used it with olive oil and why was it done with olive oil that you ended up going with olive oil? So, um, well, one, one important fact, and I'm very proud of this, is our, our company was actually mentioned in that original study. So th they, they used RC60 in that particular study. Um, and they did, in fact, use olive oil. And so it's our kind of nature to stay close to the originations of the story. Uh, and so, yeah, we're doing we our, our product is C60 and olive oil. There are some instigate. So people are selling it in MCT oil. They're selling it in coconut oil. Uh, there some are selling it with CBD. Right. So that that whole industry is going crazy. Um, but there's some there's indications a CBD that, right there. <laughs> there it is. Right. <laughs> um, there's some indications that olive oil is one of the better oils for you. Right. There's a, a huge amount of stats and we talk about the Mediterranean diet and how important olive oil is in it. So there's a lot of supporting reasons to use olive oil. For us, it's just our kind of our research foundation. Hey, hey if you want to recreate this rat study, this is exactly how you do it. We've already pre-mixed it for you. Uh, just go for it. Excellent. Let's talk about some of the other areas where it may be helpful. Uh, nerve protection. I know that um, there are people who have degenerative diseases related to nerves who are giving us good testimonials. And I think, uh, unfortunately, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up saying a couple of times, we just don't know. Do I think it does do nerve protection? I, I do believe that because of the testimonials that we're getting. Do we know why, how, what the mechanism is? We, we just don't. 
think I was looking at something on, on studies that they're trying to do on potentially, is it uh, nerve and Parkinson's potentially with C60 in the future? Yeah, we've got a testimonial of a lady uh, who had Parkinsonian type tremors. It's kind of an interesting anecdotal story. Uh, she went to her doctor. The doctor actually uh, prescribed to her some Parkinsonian drugs. She never fulfilled them. She actually just got on C60. She went back to the doctor and the doctor was like, wow, those uh, those drugs I prescribed you are, are doing better than I thought. And she was like, no, 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 it's C60. I never pres I never filled that prescription. Um, so yeah, we've there's quite a few testimonials about Parkinson's tremors and and the impact that it's positive impact that it's having there. One of the things that I do not like to use, even though there there may be some real benefits to it, but it's it's a rare day that you'll get me to put it on is sunscreen because of it really hasn't been tested to show what those chemicals do to the body or been shown actually to be healthful to you. Right. Tell us about right. C60 and the possibilities for sunburn and UV damage. Yeah, so there's some studies. There may even be some patents out that um, that C60 does protect you from UV radiation, um, and so that can be applied topically. There's actually some research that is even showing if you consume it, that it helps you with uh, with your uh, ability to you know combat combat a, a sunburn. So, so so yeah, a possibility for sure. Excellent. And going from consuming it, from us consuming it, how about animals consuming it? So remember, the original study was on rats. Um, and so we've got pets. I've got so one of one of our distributors, actually, she first purchased the product to give it to her pet because she just, you know, her pet was lying around getting older and not very active. She gave it to her pet and it became like a, you know, a young dog. I won't say pup, but a young dog. And that's why she, she was like, that was her motivation to start taking the product because um, there's no placebo effect on a pet, right? If the pet is better, it's better. If the pet's not better, it's not tricking itself into believing, uh, that it's healthier. Now, interesting, this, this actually, uh, is Gwen and I'm, I'm on a video with Gwen and she'll tell you, if you watch the video, she'll share with you that she was about three or four months into using C60 and had you asked her, she would have said, well, I, don't, I haven't, I'm not sure that I've really noticed anything. Um, and then she started taking stock of her life. She was waking up earlier, you know, a couple hours. And if you wake up a couple hours early one day, you don't think about it, right? And then maybe three days, you don't think about it. And then it's all of a sudden happen, a habit. And then you actually have to kind of take stock of your life and look back and go, wait, wait a minute. I never used to wake up at five. I always woke up at seven. You know, okay, what's the difference? And so she kind of stood back and took stock of her life and she was waking up earlier. She was getting more things. It's, it's, it's kind of a, it would be kind of weird and true to say that her testimonial about C60 is she finally cleaned her closet. Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so this might be something more for your partner than yourself. If so, that's that's totally all right. Yeah. But I was doing looking at the literature having to do with C60 and how it might affect the mitochondria. Oh. I know about telomeres. I know that people are saying that it has pr protective effects for telomeres, and telomeres are one of the things that will indicate your age. Um, and some people are even saying it's regrowing telomeres, which is near in the realm of impossibility. Um, but yeah, there's there's protective effects there. Do you remember what the the mitochondrial well, research? It was, it was talking kind of about it was talking about it needed further re further research, but it was talking about how it potentially helped the mitochondria, or maybe it had to do with an antioxidant benefit for the mitochondria the mitochondria being the energy system for the cell. And since we're talking about energy, everything comes from the mitochondria. Yeah, I, I think that may be related to it, it's a, a my, mitochondrial process mm -hmm. that ends up spitting off the free radicals. And then, yes, there is the C60 uh, to, to sponge up that free radical. An interesting thing about C60, it, it is so small, right? So 0.7 nanometers. It is so small. Uh, a typical dose for us is five mils, which is a teaspoon. In one teaspoon of this oil that has C60 in it, there are more C60 molecules than there are cells in your body. Body. Wow. Yeah, well, that's just how small it is. Let's actually, let's go from there and let's talk about sourcing C60. First off, with C60, do we need to rethink our retirement plans? Uh, so, um, I don't know. I, if, if you look at the study on the rats and the rats live 90% longer and we apply that to humans, then the average human will live to about 152 that's the average human, not the oldest and not the, you know, it's the average human. So, um, and I've talked to some people and they're like, they're, 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 they're like, look, I don't want to get that old. And I'm saying, well, if your health was still good, would you be okay with that? And then most people will say yes. Like 
their big concern about you know getting old and their mind is is you know comes with just lots of ailments and taking lots of pills and being inactive and if that's where they're going they're like I'm not interested but these you know it was not noted in that original study that these rats were lethargic they were you know normal rats until they passed you know 90% longer you know with a lifespan 90% longer an email came into me from one of my coaching clients earlier today and I haven't had a chance to to dive into this article but it was a picture of a 103 year old woman who had just won the uh, senior Olympics or something to that effect at 103. So quality of life, if we take care of ourselves, and one of those things is we're dealing with our antioxidants or our free radicals, is we may have that quality of life. So yeah, it begets the and biggest. Oh, go for it. Yeah, and I would say that you know, given the testimonials that we're getting, um, and also you know, one very important part of that study is that there were no tumors, right? So that's one of the old age tracks involves tumors. Um, and given the testimonials that we're getting, that yeah, it's it it looks like yes, potentially, and, and the, I can't say this about humans, right? There's almost no way to say you're living longer, but can say that living healthier is is really a consistent with with our customers. Woohoo! Yes. Woohoo. So on that note, the biggest question of the day is, Chris, how long are you planning to live? So I've always had a goal of 125. That was even before this, you know, this original study. I just thought that 125 was a good, good point. Um, and I remember reading an article in Men's Health magazine, and the title of the article was, yeah, Our Metabolism Slows Down As We Get Older. And it frustrated me because I was like, I don't believe that. And then I went to read the article, and in fact, my belief was correct. The whole article was about we slow down and therefore our me metabolism slows down. When we speed up, our metabolism speeds back up. And so, so yeah, that kind of was you know, disheartening. I didn't like the title <laughs> and heartening because, um, because in fact it was saying, Hey, just stay active and your, uh, your metabolism will stay high. You'll be, you know, still flex all of the things that are tend to be associated with old age are, are, are mitigated by being after active. There's a beautiful book. I, I, I might get his name wrong. Dr. Chris Crowley, a few years back, uh, younger next year. And, and he talks about, it's all a use it or lose it process. If you continue to use it, you will actually flip all of your systems back on. I know my wife Jessica had been very sick years ago with mold toxicity and actually better than any medicine, supplement, anything that she did, getting back into the gym and yep. starting to get her body to build muscle again, flipped things on. So now diving yeah. back to C60, how much C60, because you have, you have immediate access to as much as you want. How much C60 are you taking? So I take a tablespoon a day. So our, our kind of typical dosage calculator based on an allometric calculation from what the rats were given is five mils, right? I take 15, and that's a teaspoon. I take 15 mils a day, uh, which is a tablespoon. And I'll tell you, if I know that I've got a particular busy day, I'll end up doubling, sometimes tripling that, you know, a stressful day, long day or whatever. Um, and, I, and I feel that that helps me. But, uh, but yeah, my typical dosage is, is 15 mils. Excellent. And then what is a saturation bottle? All right. So in the original rat study, so by the way, this is just a, a before I explain, this is just a phenomenal piece of the study. The rats were not given any C60 until month 10. So they're 10 months old before they got, before they got their first dose. And their last dose was at 17 months. So think about that. Like, formative years, that's when the rats got their, uh, their dosage of C60. And then even though their last dose was at 17 months, the water rats died at 32 months and the C60 rats died at 62 months. When so, do rats go through puberty? Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, uh, I think we could do that calculation. I'm sure, you know, when you talk about an allometric calculation, it's really thinking about metabolism and when those types of things happen. Um, so I don't know. But, but yeah, I would, it wouldn't surprise me if 10 months has passed their, their puberty. Yeah. So they're already so, almost adults and they're starting at the C60. I'm, I'm giving us hope here. That's where I'm yeah. going. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. As I was saying that, I was like, well, that might sound like we should just not try, which I don't believe. Um, so, so you asked about what a saturation bottle is. Those rats in the first, so at month 10, they start getting doses. They were getting daily doses for two weeks and then they were getting a dose every other week 
uh, every week and then it tapered down to every other week until that 17 month when they dropped off. And so there's some thought that maybe saturating in the early stages is really important. And so, so yeah, we, we've actually got a saturation bottle that can come if you get on subscription. Um, and we, we think that's, that's worth doing. And we actually throw that bottle in for free. Very, very cool. All right. And, and on that note, I've just started taking it. So I can't say if I've seen anything or not. I know some people get better night sleep um, right away. And uh, I don't know. I'm just how excited. Is, how yeah. is your sleep typically? Like, are you a good sleeper? Do you, are you a rough sleeper? I'm an amazing sleeper typically. Um, right. The first night that I took it, um, I actually woke up early, but that wasn't a great wake up early. I just woke up too early. And the whole morning, I was like, because I Rocky. stayed in bed for a little bit, the whole morning was rough. So, okay. but I can't say yeah. that that had anything to do with it. Last night went back to my normal sleep schedule and had a great night's sleep. But I fall asleep. I, I teach people sleeping routines. I try my best to be in a, a great sleeping routine, but I finish the show, the upload for the evening. And then it's lights out pretty much. I actually bring the bird feeders in, which is a whole nother story. And then it's light <laughs> out and I fall right asleep, wake up once or twice, and then meditate good to go in the morning for for the morning yeah well yeah i'll be interested to hear kind of kind of your report and then then as you're you're training for uh is it a half marathon marathon or well, i'm i'm training so this is where it's going to get fun which is um i'm back into hill running which is just such a joy of mine oh, we have cool. mountains yeah. here i want to see how fast yeah. i can run up the mountains and, yeah. and go distance with that this year i was running up the mountains on my skis something called skinning you yep. you you have a mole skin on the bottom of your ski it's not actually from moles and and <laughs> you go to the top of the hill you peel, you peel it off you ski down and then you put it back on and you go run up again and um i was doing great with that through march or april where it starts to get warm enough that you can you can start to run on the bike path you can start to skate i'm a former speed skater and i did mm -hmm. too much on the hard surfaces running and skating too quickly and got tendonitis particularly in my left knee that I have okay. been working to shake off. And it's about 90% gone, but it is still there. So I am very curious, both if I take this orally, will it help? And I don't see why I can't take this olive oil solution and start massaging it into my knee as well. Yeah, I think uh, I, I, there, I no problem with massaging it into your knee. Um, we definitely have testimonials. I can tell you I had a knee pain. I wouldn't know that it was specifically tendonitis. But when I really started, and this was uh, kind of early 2018, when I really started taking regular doses, that that knee, that particular knee pain went away. We've got, a, you know, my dentist talks about back pain going away. Um, and, and so we've got some experiences. So I'd love to, I'm looking forward to hearing your testimonial, good or bad. It's just for me, it's just another data point. So, and, and I'll, I'll be certainly happy to share, and I've got my CBD right here, even massaging that in, it's still there. I had a, uh, an acupuncturist who's got me on fire, you can say. He's got me on fire because he said, you get to do something called prolotherapy, which is in, in, uh, inject insult into your joints. And because you've insulted it, you'll literally put things like sand into your joints. Right. Right. And it'll inflame the area, create greater blood flow, and it will heal. And he's telling me how many thousands of dollars this is going to cost to do these injections, and then I'll feel much better. And he's got me on fire to do it a different way. So Yeah, yeah, do it a different way. Um, very cool. So, so I, I will let you know. So let's back up. I want to know about, about safety and how, what to look for and what to look out for. So how is this? Let's get back now. We're bringing it full circle here to our solvents. And what yep. are the best ways? Because when I think solvent, I've even thinking things like corn syrup, which is, is made with all of these different chemicals. And I'm going, I want to stay as far away from solvents as I can. Yeah, b believe me, you do. Um, the solvents that uh, that people typically, when you use the phrase solvents, are are not the kinds of sol things that you want to put into your body. So it's really important that you that you manage the solvents uh, th the right way. So uh, the reason solvents are necessary because they're the only thing that really dissolves C60, so that you can get it isolated. Otherwise, you're taking C60 with carbon junk, and that carbon junk. Uh, can have components in it that we actually don't think are safe for you. So you want to make sure you get that separated. Then when you have your final C60 powder, you just have to make sure that you that it's been properly treated. 
And if you don't find an organization that you trust, there are other suppliers uh, of C60. Um, most of them are international. Uh, we're the largest manufacturer and supplier of C60 on the planet. Uh, and so uh, when you, if you don't have somebody that you trust, then you want to have the baking and oven and washing equipment yourself and do it yourself. Because remember, at the end of the day, you're putting this into your body. And, uh, and that's, just, that's just paramount. How can you, how can you tell if a company is um, uh, washing away, baking away, and then washing away their solvents? So um, in reality, the only way to tell is with some expensive testing. Um, if, they're, if the product that they're selling you or sending to you is so dirty with solvents, there is a possibility that you could actually smell the powder as you receive it, and you might smell solvents on it. Definitely stay away from that. But even if, if you don't, um, if it's not a reputable source, if it's not a company that's been doing it for a while, you know, there are companies in this, you know, every every cut, just like the CBD industry, there are companies that, you know, have never thought about CBDs. They didn't ever, you know, like they just decided they're going to get it and make a profit. So they only have a post office box or they don't even have a website um, and they're out there selling C60. There's, you've just got to use a lot of kind of co co caveat emptor, right? Use a lot of common sense to decide if this is a reputable company from whom you want to buy something that you're going to put into your body. Other than that, you've got to get into, to, um, I think it's FTIR testing uh, will let you know what kind of solvents are pre present. Thank you. And, and we don't have to go far down this rabbit hole. I know there's a lot on the internet about making this stuff yourself. It doesn't sound like necessarily the wisest direction to go in. Um, so if you're talking about making, uh, the actual carbon 60 yourself, uh, you can definitely do it. Like I told you, you could collect a, the, the soot from a candle flame, but it's parts per million. It's not a significant amount of C60. And then even if you make it, no matter what manufacturing technique you use, even if you make it, you've got to separate it from the carbon junk that also gets produced in that process. <clears throat> and that's the one that's going to re require chemicals or high performance liquid chromatography. And so it's you, you, like your general sense that this isn't something you should do at home is, is probably accurate. <clears throat> what dose, uh, assuming we go from a, through a reputable company, we get this to our house, what dose do you it's such an interesting question because neither one of us is a medical doctor, nor do we pretend to right. play, play one on right. TV. No, yeah. Where do we start? So in terms of dosing, basically, we just did, I did an allometric calculation. So uh, allometric it refers to understanding the, um, the metabolism of a rat and the metabolism of a human. It's often used for kind of uh, figuring out what starting dose for a testing, uh, for a testing program, if you've kind of gotten a, a particular drug through trials with rats, then you want to take it into trials with humans, use an allometric calculation to find that initial dosing. So I did an allometric calculation and that's what ended up at the five mils. Um, we've got one of the testimonials that's related to, uh, it's actually a former bodybuilder. Uh, it, it, his testimonial is that he's taking one mil a day. And then I've told you I'm taking 15. And so, you know, we don't know what the optimal dose of the product is. Um, and that's, you know, our, some of what we're going to do when we recreate the rat study uh, is actually to play around with, a, you know, have a couple of test groups to play around with the, with the dosing so we can get, you know, a better understanding of, you know, maybe there's a saturation point uh, and you only need one mil a day. Maybe you need to ramp it up and then keep it much smaller. Like we, we just don't know the answer uh, to what the right dosing is. Thank you. I think if I understand correctly, when this first came out, it was uh, uh, many years ago, it was $6,000, maybe a gram. Now, what are we down price? Because this still isn't inexpensive. And one of the deci deciding factors, I had to do a lot of research before deciding to, to bring you on the show. Actually, my wife decided, but we both had to dive into this. Was is Thank this... you to your wife, by the way. <laughs> it's, it, it's, all, it's all her. She's the producer. She's, so I will certainly pass that along. Is, is this something that we can afford today? Um, well, yeah. So um, if you're if you're talking about the powder, so the powder, the raw powder, when we started the business back in 1991, was selling for six thousand dollars a gram. Uh, you can buy that for about three hundred dollars a gram now. Uh, and then, of course, the C60 in olive oil. Uh, that's really the product that would be the easiest for you to purchase and consume. Um, we've got we've got products that are you know seventy four dollars. If you're on subscription, seventy four dollars for approximately one month supply. Very, very good. Any side effects to taking C60? 
So um, it's one of our requirements that if we get any reports of side effects, we are required to let the FDA know. Um, I'm very happy to say we haven't had to do that. The only side effects and, and side effects is probably is definitely a misnomer. Uh, the only thing that people some people report is a good quality olive oil will actually leave a, a peppery flavor in the back of your throat. And so some people aren't used to that kind of peppery flavor and they're worried. I don't know. It has it gone rancid or anything. And they're like, no, that's just a high quality olive oil. Um, and the nice thing is, is it, it almost doesn't matter what you consume a sip of water. Uh, sometimes I'll even take my olive oil, uh, C6C and olive oil with bread. Um, and so you can consume it that way. Uh, so that's one of the reports. The other one is, you know, we're asking people to take a teaspoon of olive oil, right? And so that just doesn't sit on some people's stomachs very well. And so, uh, other than that, we don't have any side effects, like no side effects have been reported to our company at all. Awesome. So I want to go into how they can, how people can get C60. But before we do this, I got to go back to 1991. And I'm curious, the soccer ball is just burning in my head because you were, was a semi-pro player for 25 yep. years. And, yep. and, and it is basically a molecular nano soccer ball. What pulled you in the direction and said, I want to co-found or try found a company in 1991 and take on C60? Well, so um, when the, I was studying mechanical engineering at the time at University of Houston, go Cougs, you, you got that in the intro. Um, and and I, the reason I chose to study mechanical engineering is I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I don't even remember why, but I've, I just always wanted to own my business and and deliver value to people. And um, and, and, and so the reason I chose mechanical engineering is it's one of the faster ways to a higher salary, right? So you can graduate in, in five years, it took me six years, but you can graduate, you could have graduated in four years. Um, and, and you could have a, a really nice salary and then I could have that money to invest and in, start a business while I was still in school. My business partner, Robert Wong, he was actually working at the Texas center for superconductivity, which is also on the U of H campus. And he was separating the fullerene. So that process I kind of described of separating C 60 from C70. He was doing that work in the lab with Dr. Paul Chu. And Dr. Paul Chu one day came in and said, well, this is a $6,000 a gram material. You guys are young kids. You should start this business. And my business partner comes from an entrepreneurial background. And like he jumped on it. And so he's off and running. Now he's going to start manufacturing buckyballs. Uh, and they brought me, actually, there was another business partner and, uh, and they brought me in so I could help him with drawings and help him with the design with my mechanical engineering background. And then what ultimately happened is I stayed and that other partner just, uh, uh, found other things to do in life. He's still a really good friend of ours and doing, doing really well. Uh, but that's how I got involved in, in carbon nanomaterials. Awesome. And what is your hope, dream, or goal for this? So um, my first hope is it's all real, right? Because I tell you, I'm as skeptical as everyone out there. Um, the study's real. I know that. Uh, the testimonials are anecdotal, but real. Uh, and I just hope that we continue to like get more good research and get more understanding of what this is and what that will mean for me Um is that that my desire to be an entrepreneur and help people couldn't have been more fulfilled than in this business. Because if what we're doing is extending people's lives and making them live a healthier life, I could I ask for anything more? Mm -mm. That would like, be a woohoo. Yeah, woohoo. <laughs> so yeah, wow. On that note, where can people go to find C60 to find out more and and it was funny. You were talking about flat earth earlier. Is there a coupon code we can use as well? Let's see. Well, she, certainly there's a coupon code. So let's think about this. Uh, what is there a coupon code you would like to use shine either from bright. this shine bright? I like it. So we'll make shine bright a coupon code. Mm -hmm. It'll get you $15 off. If you go to my vital C dot com. Uh, you'll be able to find the product uh, kind of at the bottom of the homepage. Uh, an individual is $99. I just recommend go ahead and get on the subscription. It's $74. So you'll save a bunch right there and you can cancel it at any time. And that coupon code uh, shine bright will work on, on any of the products that you purchase. Awesome. 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 And on that note, what personally brings you the greatest happiness or what I call the woohoo factor? Uh, um, I, I got to tell you, so I do own another business, um, and, and and what I love is it's an incredible environment for my employees. I love giving back, and that business is 
business helps other businesses and I love helping businesses. So it's when I'm helping people, that's when I feel woohoo. I love it. Jessica always wants me to ask a question for parents and their kids. What have you been hearing? I realize it's anecdotal. What have you been hearing for kids today with C60? Um, so in, in general, because this is such a new thing, um, I, I, I wouldn't recommend, I believe it's safe, but I wouldn't obviously wouldn't recommend that you give it to your kids. Um, and so we're not really hearing anything. I can tell you there's one anecdotal story. Uh, a lady called me and said that her, her son was ending up, um, because of mental health issues was ending up in the hospital, uh, three to four times a year. Uh, and since he was on C60, he wasn't ending up in the hospital anymore. Um, again, I don't know the mechanism. I don't proclaim to know the mechanism. Um, and it's one anecdotal story. Uh, but that, that would kind of be the first thing that pops to mind when it comes to kind of kids like parents and their children. Thank you. Since you brought up mental well-being, have you heard anything of PTSD, depression, anxiety, anything like that? Yeah. So one of my team members at, at the other company, um, uh, served in the army and PTSD is one of the things that he's struggling with. Uh, he had actually tried CBD, uh, and then stopped with CBD and is taking C60 on, on a regular basis and, and says that it's helped overall. Again, if you think about sleep, one of the things that's mentioned in that book, why we sleep, uh, I feel like I should be getting some commission from <laughs> from the sales of that book. Um, but but uh, one of the things that's mentioned is the, is the impact that sleep can have on healing PTSD. And, and I've thought about it. You, you you said it right in the beginning. If, what would it, what would the change be? And I think what would the change be to the world? Think of how much calmer, how much less war, literally, we would yeah. have if we all got enough sleep. So our fight or flight mechanism is dialed all the way down. So, so interesting. Uh, I feel like if we got rid of war, we could, that wouldn't that inherently get rid of like most PTSD? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, Chris. This has been so much fun. Any last words of wisdom on anything you want to share with people today? Um, uh, well, I just thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, I, I was I actually kind of saw you giving interviews, you know, about a week back when we were first kind of setting this up. And uh, and I was very much looking forward to it. And this has just been such a thrill exciting. I think you're almost on show number 1150 or something. Uh, and it's an honor for me uh, to be kind of included in that group. And, and, and I really appreciate what you're doing. And I appreciate what you're doing, Chris. And for, for everybody out there, I was very suspect and I really had to do my homework because I do not want an infomercial show now or ever. And I find it worthy of trying myself. I can't say how it's going to go, but I'm, I'm an N and an experimental value of one, but I'm going to give this a try myself. And I'm so glad you came on the show and exposed us to C60. That sounds wrong, but exposed us to it <laughs> as well. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to leave that alone. There's a joke there that uh, I'll keep to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun. Try C60 and perhaps begin doubling your life today and shine bright. Woohoo! Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank Good you stuff. so much. You are the so far, and I've done a lot of interviews already, uh, the most thorough. So um, it's not surprised that you're kind of, uh, I think you mentioned potentially pitching to, to, to some studios or whatever. Um, that doesn't surprise me. That's just phenomenal research. Mm. Wow. Well done. I just had a mind-blowing antioxidant-boosting interview with Chris Perez. To check out his next video on C60 and all the fascinating benefits, click here, subscribe below.